uh, you know, obviously, you know, mobile, you know, in terms of smartphones, uh, we're picking up a lot of steam. Um, there, were, there were quite a bit of research done um, that uh, that indicated that, you know, I think it was about, you know, one in four households um, in the United States had um, you know, smartphones. Um, and the smartphones, um, you know, are, you know, in, in our opinion at least, uh, distinctly different than uh, than you know traditional phones. Obviously, you know, there are three different things that we believe uh, are are vital um, that that have, that have never been uh, probably accomplished before: uh, identity, access, and location. I think these are three you know broad areas if you think about a smartphone. Uh, when I say smartphone, I you know typically mean you know phones like the iPhone or the BlackBerry or the uh, or the Windows mobile phones that are coming out right now. Uh, things that you know, you know, almost literally mini computers that you know that you can actually surf the web with, as well as you know, uh, you know, and install applications, and almost like a you know, almost these things are real computers right now. So, uh, with 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 identity, what I mean is, you know, users have you know the smartphone, at least the the app level programming interface allows us from a research standpoint to get a unique device ID. This has been a big problem in the online research business um, in general uh, to take a look at you know the only identification of an end user was essentially his email address at best uh, or a cookie placed in somebody's browser. Uh, the smartphone gives us a, a much more robust um, identity infrastructure. Every device has its own identifier uh, and users usually do not pass their phones around to each other. Um, Access is the other big thing that happened last year. Very likely was, uh, you know, most of these smartphones have unlimited data access, uh, which allows you know us to collect data over this medium as well as push data to the end users over this medium. And location, of course, almost all of these, uh, all the phones, all the newer generation phones definitely have GPS chips in, embedded in them, enabled in them, um, and this kind of gives us kind of a, a new frontier in terms of research, at least, uh, you know, where we can. Uh, we can, you know, very, very uniquely and, uh, you know, at a, at a fair degree of accuracy and precision, uh, identify where a user is, you know, provided he, he allows us for that. So, you know, so when these things confluenced, uh, we, we thought that this is something that's obviously very interesting and very, very important for us to get into uh, from a research and a data collection standpoint. Um, and so we kind of started working on server side, uh, I think. Uh, towards the end of last year, I, I guess you know around September or October of last year, and then you know I think we're ready to launch right now. Uh, just to give you guys some stats um, in terms of the mobile ecosystem, the way we see it, at least there are four four major platform players in this in this in this business. Really, is the Windows, the Android, uh, of course BlackBerry, and the iOS. Uh, and uh, you know I think Gardner predicted that pretty much you know these four will cover uh, about 50, at least 50 to 60 percent of all the smartphone, the entire smartphone market. And this gives you an idea of where the feature phone market is. And when I say feature phone, it's more you know these the the old Motorola phones, you know the flips and all those. And uh, you know at least in the United States at least uh, these you know feature phones are giving away to obviously the, the, the smartphones. Uh, and when you start looking at another phenomenon that's happening, which is kind of where, where is casual computing headed? That's another thing that we look at because if you think about it, we're in the data collection business, primarily in the survey business. Um, and surveys are, you know, typically not mission critical, let me put it that way. Uh, and uh, so what I call uh, people take surveys, you know, what I call is casual computing when they don't have too many things going on. Um, you can you can probably pester somebody to take a survey. Um, and so then the question becomes, where is casual computing headed? Are, are, are people, um, you know, uh, browsing the internet on their phones, or are they browsing the internet um, on their uh, on their smartphones and on, on, on the go, you know, while waiting in line for Starbucks or you know, you know when they're when they're in their uh, uh, cars even nowadays. So. Um, so that's where kind of if you see if you look through the future is where are, are people going to sit in front of a computer and you know uh, you know sit down and take a survey and we think that that's probably going to decline over the next you know, few years. Uh, obviously we can't predict when that's going to happen, but you know frankly it's 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 a matter of time before uh, you know before the the smartphone becomes the medium of choice for casual computing. 
interesting. And this another one, another interesting statistic. Um, you know, and this combined with another actually release that the Center for Disease Control um, recently re released uh, with, with respect to landlines and cell phones, uh, at least here in the United States. Uh, you know, one in you know one in four uh, households have a smartphone. But another interesting phenomenon also is about 25 percent of uh, households do not have landlines. Uh, so if you're you know so you, so that's a big problem for CDC because CDC kind of primarily relies on telephone-based research uh, to uh, you know clear, clear, you know random digit dialing and calling into landlines as their primary model for uh, determining uh, you know primary model for research. And now, you know, if you have 25% of the audience base, and which is primarily geared uh, to the younger audience base, uh, not even electing to have landlines, which means they're they're not part of the population sample altogether, uh, then uh, then we can uh, then we can uh, then we have a problem over here. Uh, I have a question over here. Let me see. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can expand the slides. Give me a second. Should be able to expand the slides. Uh, hopefully, this is better. Uh, uh, so let's go over uh, kind of the SMS part of research, which was which has been tried in the past and has not really worked. Uh, primarily, along the 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 reasons, you know, I believe at least the reasons where you know carrier complexity would be output as the as the number one reason. It was not easy to get uh, get a kind of SMS app running. Um, and obviously, its non-interactive nature, uh, you know, didn't lend itself, uh, you know, easy to easy for research at least. Uh, let me see if that helped. Okay. Uh, I want to go over a little bit about, you know, I think I already talked about um, the the mobile research, uh, it, it, especially as it comes to smartphones in terms of form factor, multimedia, and interactivity is another thing that. Uh, that um, that obviously you know the SMS guys um, uh, it was difficult at least for uh, uh, to do that using feature phones and, and SMS no sliders no you know no you know, watching uh, watching pictures watching even uh, videos uh, rating videos uh, so these things uh, again it's a confluence of uh, uh, it's a confluence of these things that uh, that make it happen. Uh, um, I'm assuming everybody is able to hear me. Uh, if you cannot hear me, then uh, I think you can ask uh, you can ask a question. Maybe I'm not sure what to do if you cannot actually hear me. Okay, fine. Andrew says he can hear me, so at least a few people can hear me. So, um, so where do we go with with the app model? Uh, the, you know, you know, there are two broad ways we can probably you know dissect this. One is kind of you know still going down the uh, at least on the smartphone, still going down the browser route. Um, another another way is to uh, build individual apps for each of each of the platforms. Um, uh, we've obviously chosen uh, to build apps for each of the platforms because uh, we believe there there's obviously it's a, it's it's there are you know lots lots of benefits. It's a lot more work, frankly. Uh, to build apps, you know, for each of the four platforms, you build the same app um, in four different platforms. Uh, it's a lot more work, but each of these platforms do offer kind of unique research opportunities from a kind of pure data collection research standpoint, uh, and also kind of uh, the way we can engage with users uh, is much more rich and obviously interactive over here um, on the on the uh, on the app model. Uh, I know, you know, a bunch of different companies have also kind of gone down the route of kind of the, the HTML5 and uh, kind of a mobile optimized kind of web interface, really. Um, and that's frankly fairly easy to do, and we probably we can probably do that also. But we want to take on the larger challenge first, which is kind of actually building apps uh, in each of those four platforms that I mentioned. Um, and the other thing that has obviously happened in the last year is, you know, apps have become the currency of choice. Which is, um, you know, when I say, uh, you know, is it, when I say, you know, the currency. What I mean really is, you know, you know, the 99 cent app uh, has been kind of the the Chotsky uh, that people want to play with, you know, uh, and then you know, kind of throw away or not not use. So, uh, so that has, you know, that has become a um, 
a, a very important factor in terms of you know you know when you when you start thinking about compensation for users that becomes a very important factor. Uh, and then let me go through this. Um, so where are we headed with service swipe? Uh, kind of you know we looked at it and said well the easiest thing to do is to say well hey let's just build build a bunch of apps and let for people to collect data uh, with uh, you know using using those apps. Uh, but we kind of stepped back and said, you know, can we can we look at it from a more kind of a holistic standpoint and make service swipe as more of a platform rather than uh, rather than just a, a survey taking tool, really? Uh, and that's where we are we are headed, really. Um, and you know, and and this is another you know, this slide also again talks about a little bit about in terms of you know, if you're in the market research, if you're not in the market research business, you probably don't care too much if you're just serving your own users. Um, it's not, you know, terribly exciting. But if you're in the market research business, you know, you and you've been in, in the business for a few years, uh, you will know, you know, the panel business, which is access to audience bases, uh, which is which is what it is all about. And you know, and anybody who's been in that business can tell you that, you know, the access to audiences in the online world is actually declining, um, and that's 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 being a that's a that's a big problem. Uh, and we see that. You know, even in you know, in non-market research, kind of non non-panel based research in, in our business also, uh, where you know we're not able to get uh, you know anything over you know in some cases in, in global you know in some cases over you know three or four percent response rates. Uh, from a strict research standpoint, this poses a problem because now you're only looking at you know you're look only you know getting advice and getting getting feedback from people who. Uh, who are actually electing to talk to you and uh, through the online medium, um, and our our position obviously is that you know there are, there are other mediums that we can probably explore uh, that that can increase um, the response rates. And just in terms of uh, kind of pure kind of beta testing that we've been doing, we've seen a phenomenal phenomenal kind of uh, uh, increase in response rates and kind of engagement. Uh, granted, we are also treating these users as kind of users and not just kind of you know. Uh, people who are just taking surveys. We are rewarding them with things. Um, you know, we're rewarding them with points. And we, I talked a little bit earlier on about kind of the the app currency model. Uh, we're rewarding them with uh, uh, points, and these points we then translate to different things. Um, there's a there's a different uh, the different kind of relationship uh, over there. Uh, so, you know, uh, I want to kind of switch gears really quick and go over the app itself and. I think you should be able to see my screen. I need to keep that screen. Uh, so the app itself um, is a is a singular app that that you can download. Actually, it's available in the in the app store right now. Uh, that's the app. We determine what what surveys go into the app, um, and as part of our offering, uh, uh, if if, I, if you step back one more, let me step back one more one more time. Uh, we will probably offer two different broad models in which you know users can use service right our, our business customers really can use service right from the end users what I'm going to show you right now is from the end user standpoint so the end user can download the app and depending upon where the end user comes from so if he's one of our, our partners um, uh, customers uh, in this case you know we've, we've shown you in this case you know the partner is NPCs and NPCs is one of one of the partners that uh, is actually a local Seattle company that that we've gone we've come to know really well in the last um, couple of months, uh, and they have an access to a large, uh, you know, and they do a lot of automotive research, uh, and they help uh, uh, they help auto manufacturers uh, find problems with their cars really, uh, uh, and they you know we've partnered up with them uh, in terms of defining an automotive panel for example, and kind of conduct surveys through the through the through the phone interface. So you know this one, you know, it would be a user who downloaded the app um, and came in uh, through entry sales. Uh, so we, we definitely co-brand the app in terms of how how it looks. Uh, so entry sales has its own um, you know kind of screen, and they can you know they can add a bunch of links, they can add a bunch of things uh, for themselves, and more importantly, uh, the service that the user sees um, is going to obviously related to entry sales and obviously is. Uh, controlled to a large extent uh, by NPCs. Uh, this is a this is what we call a partnership model, uh, where uh, where uh, the you know we partner up with other uh, other either sample providers and or panel providers and or other companies who have access to access to audience bases who would like uh, to move their audience uh, would like to conduct conduct research with their audience base. Uh, uh, you know, instead of conducting, you know, and sending out online surveys, you know, they obviously want to send them 
send them uh, you know mobile enabled surveys and kind of mobile surveys and kind of you know engage them in the in this model. From the end user's perspective, the idea would the idea is fairly simple. Hey, I come in, I you know install the app, um, I take surveys and I get points. Um, and, and 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 the entire system is obviously baked in on the back end with with our infrastructure. Um, you know, users, you know, you you get points, you you get you know you get to redeem those points. Say I want an Amazon gift certificate or a movie ticket, uh, and that's what you can get, and you can redeem them depending upon the number of points you have. So and this user has 45 points, he needs 100 points to get a movie ticket. So he's motivated to take a bunch of other surveys. Uh, and the survey itself is, you know, very uh, relatively straightforward. I mean, look, we're still we're, start, we're still talking, you know, a screen that is probably, you know, you know, two or three inches wide and three or four inches uh, in height. So really, you can't kind of do, you know, multiple grids and things like that. I mean, I think that's a that's definitely um, a challenge um, in terms of you know looking at it from a market research standpoint. If you want to do a side by side matrix question, well, uh, it's kind of tough. Uh, you can't do it. You don't have that much of real estate. Uh, but what you do have is uh, uh, you know uh, you know you ask shorter questions, uh, smaller questions, and you get to the point and you have identity. Keep in mind that's I think it's a it's a pretty big deal where you don't need to ask you know a 40 question survey you can ask four 10 question surveys so and that can all, all the data can be collated together um, later on so so you, so the, the idea there is uh, to make sure that you're not you know obviously you know going through a massive survey with all kinds of grids and stuff you know things like that that um, that that's what's you know frankly to a large extent is putting off a lot of people from online surveys. Uh, this you know I know I think in our platform we technically won't have a limitation in terms of the number of questions you can ask, uh, but practically I think uh, you know our initial research has shown you know anything over you know ten or fifteen questions uh, you lose people's interest really. Uh, so so our our, our our viewpoint is probably going to be around you know you ask 10 or 15 questions and then kind of you know, wait for a later point of time to ask the rest of the question. I mean, if you, if you need to ask 40 questions, you need to ask 40 questions. Somebody's paying you to ask 40 questions. You know, you figure out a way to do it, uh, and you just have to break it up into two or three different parts. And I think uh, you know, and that that kind of a model works. Uh, in terms of the question types that we're we're supporting right off the bat, uh, pretty standard stuff in terms of you know the description question type. Uh, you know, a simple multiple choice question type um, would would be supported. Uh, that's another multiple choice, uh, and then you know, a multiple choice, multiple select, where you select more than one option. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff, and this is the uh, kind of the equivalent of the matrix question in uh, in uh, in survey analytics. You know, so you ask, you know, it's it's a you know, pretty standard Likert scale. Question and you can you can ask any any number of them over here. Um, so in this case, we just put three of these things in there. Uh, and again, we have to be a little bit careful about how many of these how many of these grids that we want to put uh, on the user screen. Uh, we can probably put you know you know five or ten of these things uh, and without without too much impunity. Uh, so again, that's a that's more of a design choice as to how to do these things. But we'll be definitely supporting you know kind of the Likert scales and grids uh, right off the right off the bat. Uh, and then of course comments. Um, comments actually pose a, you know in an interesting kind of you know uh, kind of research challenge. Uh, we we don't think there will be a lot of kind of people you know typing in comments given given the form factor. Uh, but uh, but the initial research that we've done, we've actually found people typing in a fair amount of comments as part of uh, their uh, their the responses. Um, so this is definitely a little bit of a you know a, a mini shocker for us uh, because we didn't think that that's going to be a big uh, you know even between we did a you know quick study between the you know, exact same survey that we pushed online and exact same study we pushed uh, pushed through the through through the iPhone. Uh, and we actually had about you know a 40 percent increase, uh, 40 percent of people you know who use the who use the who use the iPhone actually commented on the subject. Now you can argue the reason very likely people did it because it's kind of a very singular focus, whereas on the on the web it's not this one question singular focus, but it's kind of it goes through a, you know people just go through a web survey you know fairly uh, fairly quickly and and pretty fast. 
um, and maybe that's the reason. Um, and but you know I, we don't know the reasons behind why people actually comment more uh, using 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 the phone. So uh, so that also poses an interesting challenge, kind of you know from a research standpoint. Uh, again, around the concept of you know what do you do with those comments? You know, are there other better ways of analyzing comments? You know, other than of course we provide tag clouds and text clouds uh, and things like that. And you know, and there is and there's probably a, an opportunity there to figure out you know can we you know because these comments are not the, those comments are not really large, but they are definitely there. Uh, and you know, as you can see, you know, you, you know from a end user standpoint, just going through the flow of it. You know, you know, you know, user took the survey. You know, it was 45 points. He got 20 more points, and um, you know, and that's his point balance really. So, uh, you know, because again of the identity part, we can we can assign points to a user, and then we say, okay, you can come back anytime, open up your app, and you redeem those points for any number of different things. And and these these reward items can be configured on the on the on the back end. We 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 kind of control it. Um, and we let obviously our, our customers control it. You know, if they are if they are going back to their constituents uh, to see what what was the right reward model for them. Um, so, so so far we have had partnerships with Amazon. Uh, we have a direct API integration with Amazon to give out Amazon gift cards and gift certificates. We are working on pretty much the exact same deal with. Uh, you know, with Apple also to give out iTunes cards as well as actually, you know, on the especially on the iPhone, we you know we want to uh, we will come up with an option of actually downloading apps, paid apps that you can download for free from. So if you are, you know, from the end user standpoint, again, the storyline is going to be, hey, I want Angry Birds. Angry Birds is the hottest uh, kind of game in town, and I don't want to pay 99 cents. Uh, well, guess what? You can take a couple of surveys, and you can you can get Angry Birds for free. So that's going to be the kind of storyline uh, from the end user standpoint, from the from the from the researcher as well as kind of the uh, the administrative standpoint. You know, look, it's going to cost you know 99 cents for for people to take surveys one way or the other. Uh, and you know, if 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 Angry Birds is what uh, seals the deal, uh, so be it. Um, as part of our, our our kind of thought process, we've kind of uh, we've kind of expanded the idea from the user, you know, just being just running one survey. Um, and or at, the, at least taking one survey to to the idea of these you know what we call these communities, um, and 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 users can choose to be part of one or more communities. By default, they're part of the survey swipe and any partner any, any partners community that 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 the users came in on, um, and we also have the idea of private communities. So where users can if you have an invitation code, you can give you know a bunch, your users an invitation code to say look come join my private community. We want to do some you know a research project around a particular. Uh, construct um, and um, that will that will you know and and when users join the private community and you can obviously segment the you know the invitation by any any field in the profile uh, that gives me a good point I should talk about a little bit about the profile so the profile is essentially you know you know obviously contact information but contact information plus an essentially you know series of questions and these are pretty standard kind of demographic and psychographic questions uh, that that and that are that are obviously configurable on a per kind of uh, community level. Um, so you know we have a global community that we have a whole bunch of data, and this is where again my you know my my spiel about identity uh, comes into play because now we have a fair amount of information about the user already. So you don't have to ask the same questions again and again and again, which is one of the, one of the challenges with with online research is that most people are doing research, but they they need to know a bunch of questions, and there's you know. I mean, I think most of the panel providers actually do provide uh, provide some some amount of demographic uh, and psychographic data, uh, but again, the data collection model is different. Usually, people are using some tool, you know, like you know, like uh, you know, survey analytics or confirm it or any any one of these other data collection tools. And then there's panel providers on the other side that actually do provide. I know a bunch of panel providers actually do provide. Uh, demographic data and and the, and the data merge is not necessarily seamless or easy. Let me put it that way. Uh, it's actually technically possible, but very few people actually uh, use it uh, today. Uh, I know of, anecdotally, at least uh, that, that's what I feel. At least anecdotally, I've asked a bunch of my you know research buddies if they use it, and they all say, well, it's available, but we've not used it. Um, so 
uh, coming back to the profile section, so the profile is something that the user fills out when they when they sign up. And we've got you know incentive models around the profile. You know, fill out a profile, get 20 points. Do this, get 15 points. Do that, get 20 points. You know, do, do, you know, get get some points access. Again, you know that the the amount of the currency, the amount of points we give out on a per user level also is configurable by the community partner. So you know, NPCs will work with them and say, okay, you know what, you know, we need to give out you know 30 30 points for the profile, and that's what the user gets for filling out this profile. Uh, and uh, and once you know, obviously, user fills out the profile. Future surveys can obviously target it based on profiling as well as using the profile for obviously sampling sampling needs. So if you want 50% male, 50% female, obviously this is the this is the model we'll use to to determine. Okay, we need to send it out to this, and this is the, this is the model that we're going to use for the for the sampling piece of uh, of sending the survey out itself. Uh, just kind of a uh, kind of a, a back note on this, you know, you know, this entire, you know, this is the this entire front end infrastructure. Obviously, is just coupled with 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 the back end infrastructure of survey analytics. So when we are taking surveys and creating surveys, you you know, you use the web. You don't use the actual, obviously, the, the smartphone to actually create or do any of the kind of administrative work. The administrative work all is done, you know, over the web. Uh, you go, you know, log into your account and do your thing. You know, you create profile questions. You get create custom profiling models. Uh, you know, and then and then this essentially is the kind of the, the front end, the user side, the end user side of the of of the equation over here. Uh, uh, you know, going back to the private communities, I, I think this is this represents uh, another opportunity where you know if you if you really want to you know you know if you have you know fifty thousand people, twenty thousand people in your uh, in your community, and you want to kind of sub segment that community, uh, and you send out a specific invitation to you know, uh, you know, people in Iowa, and you want to do some research for, you know, with with only with a group of folks who are in Iowa, uh, that can be done fairly easily. You just send them a private community code, and then they kind of click on it, and then they become part of that community. And once they become part of that community, you can, you know, individually target all those users for a separate project. Uh, you know, this list of surveys that that the user sees at any point is, you know, very contextual. It depends upon who the partner is, who the user is, you know, uh, and and obviously the surveys that he's been invited to, um, and that that makes it a very compelling um, compelling model where we can say, well, okay, we know we have this user base, we want to create a sub-user base so that we can conduct this research study and we can do longitudinal studies with that. So you can do multiple surveys over, over a course of, you know, you know, a few months, you're going to you know, survey them you know, every every so often. Uh, you know, talking again, I want to, this gives me a good point to segue into kind of notifications. I think that's another uh, uh, fairly uh, fairly interesting idea that has, that has come up, you know, you know, obviously using the iPhone, we can send, we can do push notifications and uh, to give you a quick background, you know, push notifications are where you know we just push out. It's almost like an SMS text message, except obviously it doesn't cost anything, um, and that's a big deal because actually, you know, you know, text messages still cost on, on on a mass scale, still still cost between you know five and fifteen cents per message, uh, and that's probably the reason why it's kind of cost prohibitive to go down the text text messaging route in some cases. Uh, uh, whereas push notifications actually do not cost anything; they're actually free. So you know, so we've obviously integrated this with the Apple push notification system, and then both Android, you know, every you know, everything Apple does, you know, there's you know the Android guys as well as you know the Windows Mobile guys and BlackBerry guys will copy over. You know, they're just lagged behind about three months. Uh, the Windows Mobile also has a push notification model, exact same thing like the Apple one. So we can uh, target. So when you send out a survey, you can send out send it out via email as well as as, and you'll use the obviously the web interface, the administrative interface to send out a survey, and then you say, okay, hey, look, I, I also want to send out a push notification because I know, you know, 35% of my of my user base is mobile, and we will and they have downloaded the app, and we can we can do a push notification to them. Uh, so uh, I want to switch a little bit um, and kind of you know, so we've kind of talked about you know the basics of surveying essentially uh, on the on, on the mobile on the mobile phone really, uh, but I think you know one of the things that mobile phones do give us is kind of you know like I said earlier on, uh, it's kind of it's like a real computer uh, and it gives us kind of you know innovative research models that that were very difficult to do in the past. Um, one of the things that we are doing right now and this is again a, a pilot project. Is essentially, you know, live pulsing during a, an event, and we've chosen the State of the Union as as kind of a 
a an event that you know I know you know a lot of people are going to use it you know be there in front of TV watching it um, and uh, if you're like me you're we're all we're all fiddling around with our phones while we're watching TV we're always multitasking all the time um, and so and, and this is again uh, one of the one of the research it's a research project that we've partnered up with a couple of different folks um, the Huffington Post the the Personal Democracy Forum, as well as a uh, political science professor from UMass Amherst, we've kind of formed a team together and said, well, you know, during the during the State of the Union, can we can we engage a group of users um, and do two things, two two major two major things is what we are trying to figure out and see if it works or not. Uh, one is pulse polling. So during during the event itself, we can send out polls, we can send out surveys to users and say, hey, what do you think about this? And we'll have a kind of a moderator slash administrator on the other side, actually you know listening in and uh, actually creating the polls on the fly and sending it out uh, in real time uh, to the group of users who've downloaded the app. Uh, and that can be done uh, fairly easily. Um, and, and we'll see how, how well that pans out. So that's one part of the pulse polling thing. And the second part is really uh, around the idea of kind of dial testing. So, so uh, if you've been in, in the market research business, so dial testing is, a, is actually a 30-year-old concept where people essentially uh, move their dials up or down depending upon, you know, at any point of time, depending upon whether they like what they're hearing or they, they don't like what they're hearing. Uh, so we can, you know, again, this is a, a unique, unique way of capturing kind of opinion data, obviously. Uh, and you know, we we've come up with this idea of like, look, we can we can move the dial up or down, and you know, we have a little chart over there that you know actually shows what your current state is, um, and you can move it up and down. And we are obviously capturing data as you know on a second by second level as we go through this, uh, go through this um, live event. Uh, and the idea, and the at the end of the live event, we'll post the data back up to the server, and now we have data, you know, from not, you know, usually this is done, you know, CNN does it, you know, Frank Luntz does it with, you know, ten Democrats, ten Republicans in a room, uh, but what our our, our uh, thought process around this is, you know, why don't we get a hundred thousand people to do it, not just ten Republicans and ten Democrats to do it. Um, again, that's another, you know, very very interesting project that probably would not have been possible without obviously smartphones because you need you know a fair amount of kind of client side infrastructure to actually make this happen. Um, so this is another project that we are we are you know the side the State of the Union project is again uh, something that we are obviously you know very 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 passionate and we're very very interested in ourselves finding out you know how uh, what the uh, what the demand and what the uh, what the response to that is going to be. Uh, this, so again, that gives you an idea of what are the kind of the, the possibilities around research, uh, the possibilities around data collection. Go, you know, can 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 be expanded. You know, all these phones, at least the, uh, the iPhone has a uh, has a camera built in, um, and you know, in the, in the newer versions even have front-facing cameras built in. Uh, so you know, you know that it's an iPhone and it's a front-facing camera is there, so you can you know message a user, say, look, you got to take a photograph of your fridge and send it to me or whatever it is. Uh, and these kind of these kind of projects were, you know, obviously massively difficult to do uh, without without a smartphone platform, and that's why and that's why we are so excited about this platform, you know, this kind of this this journey that we're we're embarking on, uh, because the possibilities are kind of very very different than what we you know what we are normally accustomed to in the web world, really. Uh, let's go back to our presentation, kind of you know. Uh, yeah, like I said, going back to kind of in terms of, kind of licensing and what what our kind of thought process around you know how we are going to you know present this to most of our clients, uh, you know broadly speaking, like I said, there are there are two different models. One is kind of a partnership model where we kind of um, there are no upfront cost to it. It's essentially kind of a revenue split model. So if you are selling access to your user base, then we we kind of partner with you to. Uh, move them into a into a mobile space, and then you know we we split split revenues on a 70 30 uh, 70 30 model. Um, and then the other 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 idea, if you're not really selling into uh, into somebody, then you know we we create a kind of a siloed environment for you for this. Uh, it's the same app, but it's a siloed environment. So you can you can then say, okay, these users, you know, nobody else touches them. We are the only guys, and it's it's a it's a it's a private mobile community really. Uh, and 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 in terms of kind of licensing fees and so on, you know, there'll be a basic setup fee, and then, um, like most other kind of private communities, it'll be uh, the licensing will be you know essentially a function of you know the size of the community that you're 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 chasing after and the frequency of 
uh, uh, frequency of you know uh, surveys that you're doing with them. Uh, I want to give you a quick, quick kind of you know rundown on you know three different projects that we are kind of you know very actively working on. You know, Ziv Davis Enterprise is a is a you know is a great partner of ours. We you know they they've done a lot of business with us, and uh, and it's essentially you know they own eWeek, Baseline, and CIO Insight magazines. And one of the things that their head of research, that Courier, was talking to me about was you know again the kind of the the, the research model, not really kind of you know looking at looking to the future and saying, look, are we going to continue doing online research? Uh, why don't we jump started by you know building a mobile panel for our you know IT decision maker mobile panel, uh, and that's been a that's been a great um, great success for them uh, and for us frankly uh, to kind of bring in a group of users um, who who are already I mean, the, I mean keep in mind these guys are already tech savvy people people on eVeek the CIOs of the CIO, you know uh, the CTOs of the world uh, they all obviously are you know reaching that audience uh, using a smartphone is you know obviously it's almost a no brainer it's too easy. Uh, and that you know that was a great uh, great model for you know to part for Zero Davis to partner with us to say well we're going to create a mobile panel with uh, with these folks and then you know then we have the option of obviously uh, uh, selling access to these people and our kind of editorial editorial research also and Zero Davis does a lot of editorial research. Uh, when I say editorial research, it means you know, you know re internal research that they do and then they publish. Uh, another partner of ours is Ashworth College, um, and they are uh, they are essentially a for-profit private they're in the for-profit private education business, um, and you know and they have a fair amount of users that come in again very good demographic young audience uh, that have access to smartphones so we wanted to make sure that the 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 partnership the at least the initial partnership we were making. Uh, the demographic was there, so that's why we went through that that process. And finally, we also, you know, are also talking to a, a, a market research company out of out of Ireland uh, called Spongit, and they have, you know, an online panel. Um, and they've been, you know, actually Spongit has been one of my customers from the early days of uh, when we started Question Pro, really. Uh, and uh, uh, and you know this is another model where you know we we were we were able to bring about an additional revenue stream for them uh, because now you know they took their online panel converted it, converted it into a mobile panel and then they could sell access to the mobile panel also uh, in parallel frankly to the to the to the to the online panel. Uh, I think that's about it. I mean I think uh, you know I I don't see I don't see any questions over here. Uh, I'm going to just kind of wait around over here for a couple of more minutes. Uh, uh, to to go over the to see if there are any questions that come up. Let me see if there are any. There's a hand raised also. I'm not sure what what to do. So, uh, good question. Uh, uh, Guy Ro Guy Robertson asks uh, a question around. Hey, can we just do field surveys with this? Um, essentially, what he's asking is about, you know, can you use an Android, you know, an iPad or an Android tablet with, uh, uh, in you know, with this? Uh, the answer is kind of yes and no, really. Um, uh, the we actually have a separate. I think that that kind of model is a little bit different than what we are espousing with, uh, with ServiceWipe. Uh, we do have a separate kind of project for for the iPad you know since we have already developing stuff for the for the iOS it's actually pretty easy for us to develop stuff uh, for 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 smartphones now we actually have a separate project called survey pocket that we are we are pushing that's that that kind of solves that problem so that the, the problem that guy is talking about really is hey I want to go to go to a mall and conduct some field research really um, or I want to go to somebody's doorstep and say and ask them a bunch of questions um, and I think it's probably you know very relevant in kind of a, a, in emerging countries uh, like India and China where uh, where you know uh, where it's actually more more economical even frankly in some cases it's more economical to do field research than to do online research really or even SMS based research. Uh, so uh, for that, we I would I wouldn't uh, my short answer to that question would be we won't use survey swipe for that particular model. For that we would use something else. We'd we have a separate iPad app that we can download that is that is more traditional, which is more kind of linked to your to link to your surveys in your account. Uh, it shows up all the surveys in your account and you go ahead and take the surveys and it's an offline solution really uh, where you actually are no don't need to be connected to to any to any you know, computer, or you know, to be connected to the internet to actually take the service, and then when you come back to a Wi-Fi enabled place, you can, uh, you can then, uh, you can then obviously upload the data. Uh, 
you know, you know, Leonard Murphy, Lenny over here asks, you know, the obvious question. Uh, you know, what are, what are we doing about, you know, location? Uh, so far, I've not actually shown you anything about the location stuff that, that we are, you know, dreaming about. Uh, but you can extrapolate from here. Uh, we can pretty easily, you know, determine from, from the user standpoint, when they fire up the app, we know where you are. You're in a Starbucks, you're in a Pete's, you're, you're in, you know, you're in McCormick's, you're in Daniel's Broiler. Wherever you are, we can present you with questions contextually related to where you are. Um, and that is, um, that is obviously kind of a, a slated future goal, um, and actually not even not even that distant in the future. Uh, we just don't, you know, the location involves a fair amount of work in terms of kind of development, and we want to get this out, in, you know, by a particular time span. But you know, we we, we set ourselves with a deadline of January 18th. So uh, for the initial release, we obviously won't have any location features, but you know, very very soon, um, you can kind of expand. You can definitely get those things in there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you, I mean, I think our, our, our position, uh, okay, let me read the question before I actually answer the question. So Matthew Miller asks, uh, how easy, how easy is it to deploy it on the iPhone, Android, Windows, and BlackBerry platforms? Uh, it's actually in terms of the users themselves, um, uh, in terms of deploying a survey, uh, uh, it's instantaneous, really. If the user has downloaded the app up front, then you know, obviously, when they open up the app, uh, it, it shows up. That's it. Uh, and depending upon, uh, you know, whether you invited them or not, it'll show up. You know, when they open up the app in the list of the survey screen, they they will either see the see the survey or not see the survey. Uh, uh, so that's kind of the that's kind of the easy part. The tough part, obviously, is getting all your users to download one of the four app platforms. Um, and you know that's uh, that's just a matter of kind of plowing through and saying, look, if you want to you know engage with us, and we look at this as kind of a long-term kind of play, really, not just a you know download this. Nobody's going to download an app to really just take one survey. Uh, so if you're just looking for somebody to just take one survey, I, I don't think this may be this may not be the correct model for you. Uh, but if you're looking to somebody uh, who you want to engage with on a, on a continuous basis over at least two or three or four different times, then I think it actually fits in really, really well. Uh, because then, you know, you can run one survey, then you can run another survey and so on. So it's not just a single, you know, sh you know point and shoot and go. Uh, hopefully that answers the question for Matthew. Uh, uh, you know, do you have other samples or field questions too? Uh, Diane, Diane Hayes asks, uh, do you have other samples to field questions? Uh, uh, do you mean, uh, I think, uh, I think you mean uh, sampling uh, audience bases? Uh, and I think the, our solution, at least on the survey swipe model, is being essentially being partnering up with, um, you know, any number of, you know, audience providers, really. Um, so, you know, like, like I said, NPCs is one audience provider that is heavily kind of focused in on automotive research. Um, so that will be a, a sample kind of provider. And then it will also be based on the agreement with, with NPCs and us as to whether some of, some of these sample providers may not want any external access. Some of them may want actually external access. Uh, so, uh, so the idea there would be, you know, depending upon the partnership and I, you know, we've already, you know, we're already in touch with, you know, five or six, uh, relatively decent size uh, sample providers to say, hey, we can take your kind of, you know, they take your audience base uh, and uh, express it obviously to all our customers um, and also kind of, you know, have them kind of use it. So uh, in terms of uh, sample, you know, if your question is around sample providers, then, you know, we'll have obviously partnerships with a whole slew of them. Uh, who and and who matches the correct audience is what obviously the survey will go to. Uh, in terms of if your question is around you know the samples of questioning, then I'm not sure what other different kinds of questions that are needed right off the bat. But you know like you know I, you know when I started question flow, we thought we just need you know you know eight different question types and we are good to go. You know and look you know five or six years later we have about 25 different question types uh, uh, in survey analytics and and so we you know I think it's a matter of time as we keep adding more features and adding like you know dial testing component is one example uh, it's more obviously an opportunistic one that we are we're taking on right now uh, uh, our cell phone I'm gonna switch switch to the next question uh, no, so Michael asks 
uh, are cell phone numbers required uh, to invite specific people to complete a survey? And actually, no. The idea there here is actually we don't have access. The apps actually do not have access to the cell phone number of the user. Uh, like I said, the apps do have access to Unique's unique device identifier, but they don't have access to the phone number. Uh, so, uh, in terms of getting people, uh, getting access to people, you still, we still need to kind of use traditional models, like you know, send out an email to a bunch of people. So, if you had, you know, you know, hundred people who, who you wanted to kind of engage with uh, through the mobile platform, you'd have to still, you know, use traditional models, like you know, send out, send out, uh, send out an email to those hundred people, go, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like you to download this app, and here's the URL to this, and here's how you do it. Uh, and that's that's kind of the model uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to follow. Or you can put up a banner ad somewhere, and we're doing that with eWeek, for example. You know, eWeek is directing traffic to a, to a particular location where people then download the app, and then we know that those users are from eWeek, and then from from then on, uh, eWeek get eWeek's uh, eWeek gets uh, rather a direct access to those users. So it's kind of a little bit of a pain, misery, and suffering up front, but then uh, later on, uh, you know, obviously they're 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 there's much there, there are dividends to pay uh, later on down the road. Um, uh, and do, 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 let's see if we have any more questions. Um, yeah, Scott asks each mobile. You know, he he has a pretty interesting question. Are you developing for each mobile platform separately, or do you have a cross-platform strategy? Uh, from a technical standpoint, we are actually developing. You know, obviously for each platform separately, because I think uh, there are certain things that are offered in certain platforms that are not offered in others, um, and we want to take advantage of obviously kind of the user interface elements of each of the platforms. So. Um, you know, from a technical, the, the technical answer to that question is we do have separate, you know, four separate, you know, teams that actually develop each of the four different uh, apps. Um, obviously, there's kind of, you know, cross, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, domain knowledge transfer between the four teams, but, uh, but ultimately, you know, that's kind of our strategy at least uh, to make sure that each of those are function as best as it can, depending upon the platform. Uh, um, you know, a good example would be you know the push notification uh, on the iPhone. The push notification is, is ridiculously simple and ridiculously easy to kind of implement. Uh, whereas on Android, it's a lot more complicated, a lot more difficult. You know, and you have to do a lot more work to make you know get a push notification system going. Um, and then you know you know there's so many different factors in each of these platforms that that are exposed and you know that are obviously out there. Uh, so at this point, you know, obviously no one platform is, you know, obviously iPhone is it has a has majority share, but actually Android, you know, we just, you know, I think it came out about a couple of days ago. Uh, Android has surpassed, or at least is surpassing right now, uh, its kind of reach uh, with respect to iOS. So, uh, so we don't know which one of these platforms are really, frankly, going to win, and we we probably are going to continue. We'll, we'll fight the cost and just do the development on all four. Uh, uh, all four platforms, um, and then make sure that obviously all there's some amount of kind of common uh, common look and feel between all of them uh, that makes sense. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, you know, Lenny asks, uh, you know, how is Survey Swipe superior to other mobile platforms and can be developed in multiple languages internationally? I, I think one way to look at Survey Swipe is kind of an extension of uh, of Survey Analytics, really. Um, so we, you know, obviously on the back side we have a fair amount of infrastructure in terms of um, analytics, routing logic, uh, you know, all kinds of things that we've built over the last five years, really, uh, in terms of data collection and kind of analysis of the data. Uh, so this essentially becomes a front-facing kind of model against that that back-end system that we've built over the last five years. So. Uh, from that standpoint, I think Survey Swipe um, has a has a tremendous, you know, obviously a tremendous advantage uh, because obviously you know Survey Swipe is is one of the subsidiary companies of Survey Analytics, and we, we we use you know we license the technology as well as we license uh, license all the systems through 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 an internal uh, internal model. So that's that you know I think I'll I'll, I'll stick to that on on the answering of that question and. Uh, in terms of you know internationalization, absolutely. I mean, I think you know you know we you know the uh, most of the data that you see over here actually comes from the server, really. Uh, so in terms of when you say please rate your reviews, you know you know and so on, they're all coming from the server. So if you have you know you know a survey in Arabic or Hebrew, even right to left languages, and obviously Chinese, Japanese, uh, we can accommodate all of them, you know, without without a problem. 
uh, because ultimately, you know, the data data comes from the server and stores and, and is stored in the server. And you know, obviously, like I said before, we are we are kind of leveraging you know what we have, uh, you know, just like how you would do a survey uh, on our survey platform on the web, you know, and you can do obviously, you know, you know, 85 different languages. You can you can roll out a survey in any number of languages. Uh, you can roll the same same survey out, um, or, or or obviously a mere version of the survey. You know, again, you know, you don't want it to roll out a 30 question survey, but if you want to, if you can break it down into uh, five or 10 questions, um, you can roll that out in any 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 specific language that you want, um, including double byte characters. Uh, can you look for surveys that you want to take from self so if I agree with you. So Matthew asks uh, actually an interesting question that gets tied into the location stuff that I was talking about. Uh, so he asks, can you look for surveys that you want to take from a specific company? Uh, so if you have a good or a bad experience with a particular brand, can you uh, can you kind of let them know? Uh, and the short answer is uh, yes. That will be probably tied to the location feature that I was talking about. Uh, so you know, I think uh, you know, arbitrarily saying, look, I want to I want to give feedback for Starbucks. Uh, you know, you only have so we only have so much real estate. Uh, but if you're near a Starbucks, uh, at that point you could probably give feedback uh, to Starbucks. Uh, so uh, that's kind of model, uh, uh, Matthew. We'll probably go after, um, and that I think that makes more sense than just kind of saying, "Well, look, I want to give feedback about you know any any random thing." There are you know 25 million random things on the on the planet, when you have no idea to contextualize that. Uh, so based on so it will essentially be piggyback on top of our location feature, where we say, "Okay, you are in you're in the airport, so you can give feedback to the TSA. You can give feedback to you know." Uh, you know all the all the all the merchants in the airport or the port of Seattle. So you know which controls the you know which controls the airport over here. Um, so there uh, that helps us. You know again location helps us contextualize kind of you know, you know uh, unsolicited feedback, which is what we're really asking for. Is you know when you have unsolicited feedback, uh, can you use this? Absolutely, and that's definitely part of our plan. Uh, uh, no discussion. And, okay, so what is the pricing model? So Andrew asks. Uh, what is the pricing model? Uh, I think I went through this a little bit. I mean, in terms of you know, you know, it really depends upon whether it's a you know a private community or a community that we can you know expose to you know a, a larger audience who want who, who want access to our uh, to our user base really. Um, so uh, so Andrew, Andrew the so if you want a private community, obviously there's a licensing fee and then there's a per per user per year fee of some sort. Um, and that can vary anywhere between, you know, I think on the on the low side, it's going to be about 10 cents per user per year to, to about a dollar per per user per year on the high side, uh, depending upon depending upon the, the volume and the and the, and the, and the size of um, as a, a, the, between the volume and the size of your audience base really. Uh, and on the, on the partnership model, uh, it's actually no cost really. They are partnership model because we're going to make money if you make money. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the obvious answer to that question, really. Um, signature question. I'm not sure what that means, Andrew. Or maybe you can restate that. Uh, why did I? So Janet asked, well, why, did I, "Why did I choose HTML? You know, over uh, how, why did I choose you know app over HTML5?" I mean, the simple answer, Janet, is like you know, for example, cameras. Uh, it's you know obviously very difficult to use HTML5 to to take a photograph and you know send it send it as part of your survey. Uh, so yeah, you know we think that there there are these kind of you know smart things that we can do, uh, and from an app development standpoint, uh, you know we actually did the math. You know it doesn't it's not as expensive as you would think it is. Um, I think it's it is it's definitely more work uh, uh, as compared to HTML5, uh, but definitely like you know uh, it's not a, you know it's not a ton of more work, and we can do some you know. Uh, from a user interface standpoint, I, I don't think HTML5 is still there yet um, on the on the smartphone. Uh, so uh, a, you know, I think the the idea of location is pretty hot, and I know HTML5 has location built into it. Um, uh, but we, you know, again, short answer to that question is, you know, we believe there are obviously greater opportunities. Right? Let me put it this way: there are greater opportunities uh, in the in the app world rather, you know, than sticking to HTML5. And net net, at the end of the day, if you want to do HTML5, we can still do it. I mean, it's not that complicated, so we can actually have HTML5 kind of option also available out there. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. A guy asked another question. Can you can you deploy it on multiple platforms? You know, Apple, Android, and collate the data centrally. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, in fact, it is it is done that way and only that way only. So, uh, which means when when you know when you when you be sent out of the survey, it's going to go to the device that the user has obviously registered with. Uh, and it could be an Android, it could be any one of those. Uh, we'll we'll have to start getting into complications when there are certain features available in certain platforms. So at this point, I just saw the you know the question types are fairly straightforward. Uh, you know these these question types are available for all platforms. So you know it'll get deployed uh, on the platform that the user has obviously registered with, and the data on the back end is collected in the same way that it's collected from you know anywhere else. So you won't you know from for all practical purposes, as the administrator of a particular research project, uh, you wouldn't care whether it came from, I mean, you would know that it came from an iPhone or an Android platform or any one of those, but you know, it, it wouldn't make a difference to you. You don't have to do anything uh, uh, specific for each, uh, each platform. Um, so Mahesh uh, asks, uh, do you have some kind of a basic power management system? Yes, you know, this, uh, this is actually tied on the back end to our uh, to our power management system, really. So, you know, obviously, you know, ultimately, we think about it. What what we have over here is really kind of the uh, the, the front side of a, a panel management system. So, uh, I can go over the panel management system right now, but it, it's you know, it's not probably worth worth going going over it right now. But my, we can go we can talk about it offline. Uh, but it is definitely plugged into our you know, our you know the survey analytics panel management system. Uh, that we have um, uh, as part of you know on on the on the back end to to do user management. So you can say, okay, these users are verified, these users are not verified, and so on and so forth. These are unsubscribed, and so on and so forth. So that's 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 what we have in place today. And that's why it was again it was easier for us to build some of this uh, because we had the back end infrastructure in 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 there. Uh, so Matthew asks, uh, the survey, the survey analytics mobile app for the iOS. That's actually a pretty straightforward app. That's not really kind of what we are talking about. That is the survey analytics. So he, his question again. Let me kind of rephrase his question. So Matthew asks, so there's a survey analytics mobile app also available on the App Store. Uh, that is a different, uh, you know, again, it serves a different purpose, frankly. And the survey analytics mobile app is essentially kind of our version of the HTML5 optimized kind of model really. It's, you know, it's a very simple app. All it does is basically make sure that, you know, a normal survey that you have online uh, is rendered correctly within within the Safari browser. And we built that, frankly, to be candidly, we built that about, you know, six or eight months ago. Uh, and, and we should probably pull it out of the App Store because at this point, I, I think we have a far better infrastructure to handle um, handle uh, mobile mobile data collection than we had, you know, definitely about you know six to six months ago. Um, so that was our first kind of foray, kind of you know, dip, we were dipping our toes uh, into the mobile uh, into the mobile world, and we saw we'll build a very simple app uh, that doesn't have any bells or whistles, and all it does is renders a sur renders a survey uh, correctly within within uh, within the mobile ecosystem, really, kind of fr frankly within the mobile kind of the Safari browser, really. Um, so that's you know that's you know you know we're way past beyond that stage. Um, how many people have downloaded the app or they have? Do you have the population? Is there something you can provide? So yes, this Amanda. So the so far we've not actually launched it you know in in, in any big way with our partners. Uh, so we expect over the next you know two three months we'll have you know you know about you know 500,000 to a million people downloading the app you know because of our partnerships with. Uh, with uh, with everybody that we you know obviously we are talking to, uh, and you know obviously we will have profile information, demographic information, uh, and so on and so forth. Once we have, you know, once we go through that process, so at this point you know we we don't have too many downloads obviously because we are obviously not uh, we're not even asking anybody to do it right now. Uh, how do you direct the? We actually live the so so Som Somya Panda. Ask how do you detect uh, what particular mobile device platform and send their respective app to the users? We actually let the users pick their phone. So we, the user gets presented with four options: look, are you on an Android, or, and so on and so forth. And the user gets to choose what platform he is, and we don't have to detect anything, frankly. Uh, we could probably make it smarter if the user is actually browsing on the phone, uh, on the page when they actually go to download the app. We can say, well, okay, we know that you're you're you know you're running Android version 2.1, so you probably want the Android app. Here you go. That's kind of the default option that's available. Uh, so at this point, 
you know, we don't actually do any kind of smart detection because we frankly don't have to because we just let the user pick which uh, which platform he's, he's a part of. Uh, so Mahesh also asked about the offline. I talked about the offline offline part, which is actually not through service swipe, but through a separate product line that we we have uh, for offline service. Because the, you know we believe, you know this this the service swipe platform really is for kind of you know connected service because we're looking at location, we're looking at real time feedback. Uh, uh, if you want to do kind of offline processing, uh, we have a separate kind of a separate product line for that, and I think that thing is called Survey Pocket. Uh, so if you want to Google that, you can probably find that out. Uh, so Nitin asks about, about the uh, iPhone's unique ID uh, and how is that useful. It's really kind of, you know, it's about identity, really. I mean, it's to make sure that the same guy is the same guy who answered the, you know, profiling question is taking the survey. Um, you know, that's what on, on, on the server side we, we can make that, make that uh, determination. Uh, and also, you know, you know, breaking a survey down into multiple parts. Uh, so when you when you break when you break a process down into multiple parts, you need some sort of essentially an identification model, really. Uh, uh, typically in the online world, it's you know an email address. Uh, you know, you, you know, give me your email address, and next time you come to take the survey, you know, supply me with an email address uh, and possibly a password. Uh, that becomes a, the combination of the email address and password becomes the identity model, at least in the online world. Uh, from a from a usability standpoint, obviously that's a little cumbersome uh, uh, because you have to obviously remember you know 14 million email addresses and passwords that you've signed up on 14 million sites. Uh, but uh, and and that's where from a usability standpoint, the phone you know the phone's device ID becomes a unique identifier. And the fact that the user cannot kind of change the device ID to a large extent, I'm pretty sure there are hacks available that will allow you to change the device ID. Uh, on the Android as well as the iPhone, uh, but for the most part, we can we can assume that you know we won't have uh, we won't have um, you know we won't have users hacking their phones to figure out you know how to change their device IDs. Mike Pritchard, uh, absolutely. He asks, uh, you know, can we can we get a copy of the presentation? Uh, it's actually already out on the blog, so if you can go to blog.sorianotics.com, I posted the slide share. Uh, of that presentation uh, online, so it's already out there. Uh, I was trying to do a recording of this webinar, but I don't think I'm smart enough to do the recording of this webinar. So we uh, we have to go with kind of just the slide share of the slides that are available out there. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Esther says we are actually recording it. Okay, good. So we have a uh, Esther has has recorded this webinar, which means we should be able to post actually the recording of the webinar uh, in a short while. Uh, and we'll send, I'll send out an email really quickly to all the guys who attended the webinar with a link to link to the blog post as well uh, that'll have a link to the slide share as well as the the webinar itself. Um, uh, so Somiak asks, what about people who have a basic phone that does not support apps? Uh, unfortunately, at this point, you know we're not targeting those people really. I think um, the the premise I think the premise that we are going after, frankly, is uh, you know, you know, you, you know, over the next two to three years, you know, looking into the future, uh, uh, at least my premise is that you know, most, if not uh, most people, will have some sort of a smartphone that can install apps. Uh, now, that's my basic premise, and you know, I may be wrong about it. Uh, uh, in which case, you know, service swipe is not the right solution. Uh, but if I'm right about it, uh, you know, I think service swipe will be a very, very compelling, compelling platform. All right. Uh, I sent it to the books. Okay. All right. I think we're good to go. Thank you, everybody. Oh, actually, we have a question from Anup. Let me just try it. Will you support uh, APIs for the push model you mentioned, which is smartphone support? Um, so he asks an interesting question, actually. Uh, what about pushing mobile surveys after a point of sale purchase? Um, um, so. Uh, you know, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, frankly, we don't. You know, we have, kind of from a technology standpoint, we still have to integrate with point of sale systems because, uh, you know, a point of sale purchase. Um, you know, we we don't have, we don't know whether the user. It's unlikely the user has the app running during a point of sale purchase, um, and that's an interesting interesting idea to think about at least um, to kind of you know do transactional surveys. And I know a lot of kind of researchers have have talked to want to kind of bridge the bridge the time gap between kind of a, a purchase and essentially opinions about the purchase. Um, 
and uh, you know uh, for that will require some amount of you know at least technical infrastructure technical engineering work uh, to kind of merge our systems with kind of point of sale you know vendors really uh, to so so I know when you know user X has has purchased something we we have their email address we have something to the to our effect to that effect that we can uh, you know correlate to and send out uh, send out either a push notification or send out um, even frankly uh, 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 an email uh, that'll that'll open up the app so uh, I, mean, I think the short answer to that question really is um, you know I think it's a very interesting idea that that's definitely worth exploring uh, and. And can you? And the second part of this question is: Can you partner? Can your partners push service based on a non-location-based event? Uh, I, you know, I think yes. I mean, if it's not location-based, then probably is time-based um, event. Uh, so, uh, so definitely, you know, uh, the push infrastructure, sub, you know, that we 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 have supports uh, kind of a you know obviously uh, a time-based kind of rollout, uh, which we will do, frankly. For the State of the Union project that we are working on right now, like I said earlier, you know the State of Union is on uh, what uh, January 25th, so about two weeks from now, uh, and we will be sending out. We have, you know, we'll be sending out a push notification to everybody who's downloaded the app to kind of participate in the in the in the in the conversation around the State of the Union during the State of the Union. So at you know I don't know eight o'clock Eastern I think is when on on January 25th is the State of the Union. So right at that moment, you know, probably five minutes before that, we will send out a push notification to all the users uh, to come in and participate in that dial testing event, and or do, and obviously it's do uh, future push polling uh, that that our partners have you know have selected to do. So hopefully that answers uh, Anoop's question. Um, thank you everybody. I think I'm about ten minutes overdue, so I think we are good to go. Uh, my email address is right there. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, and my phone number is also obviously right there. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions or if you have other ideas. I'm always looking out for you know crazy ideas and you know crazy new 